Catholic priest and clergy accused of sexually abusing children out of the pulpit now living under the radar at a Missouri treatment center. Peace for investigator Susan L. Corey uncovers why some say better methods of protecting kids are not being utilized. These are men who have molested kids. Tucked behind trees in a Dittmer, Missouri neighborhood. I think it's only a matter of time until another kid gets hurt. Is a Catholic community shrouded in secrecy. I was worried about my daughters. Signs for the Viani Renewal Center. There's some sick people over there. Don't say who lives here. Over the decades, I think there are literally hundreds, if not several thousand, sex offender clergy who have been through that place. Go down my driver, make a left, and you can see everything. Steps away, neighbors on Imy Road say for years they were in the dark. We really didn't know what was going on. You know, there, there could have been a retirement home for priests. As far as we know, we had no idea it was pedophiles. Michael Stenshorn moved his family here 23 years ago. Protect the children, not the priests. In that time, the Catholic Church sex abuse scandal hit, exposing decades long cover up and allegations against thousands of clergy. Turns out some of those men were taken out of churches and sent to Dittmer, Missouri, a small town just outside St. Louis. And I'm always seeing new people. I'm seeing younger people over there now. They drive them to shopping centers. I've seen them in restaurants. They can come and go as long as they have a chaperone. The center is run by the Servants of the Paraclete, a Catholic religious order founded in 1947. The Paraclete's website claims to provide care for priests and brothers in need. Nothing mentions sexual abuse. We went to the St. Louis Archdiocese for answers, but couldn't get the bishop or anyone else here to talk to us. Instead, they told us the center in Dittmer is run independently by the servants of the paraclete, even though at the end of the day, it's still a part of the church. Bishops can do a lot more than they claim that they can do. David Clossy works with the Survivors Network of those abused by priests, known as SNAP. As a child, he says he was abused by a priest. Kids are safest when the public is warned about child molesters. The Missouri Sex Offender Registry shows the center in Dittmer is home to six clergy members convicted of abusing kids. Some are names that made national headlines, like Father James Talbot, convicted of raping multiple students. Most of the offenders are ranked at the most dangerous level, a tier three, meaning they'll be on the registry for the rest of their lives. But News 4 investigates discovered not everyone living at the center is on Missouri's registry. Robert Broyette is accused in civil lawsuits and settlements of abusing dozens of kids while he taught at Catholic schools across the country. He's on the Illinois Sex Offender Registry. He was convicted there for child pornography. But that record shows he's living out of state. News 4 found his name on the National Sex Offender Registry, with his address as the center in Dittmer. But back on Missouri's list, his name never shows up. It's a ticking time bomb. More and more problem priests are being sent to these facilities, and less and less do we know anything at all about them. News 4 Investigates obtained a list compiled by private investigators working with survivors of church sex abuse. It names just over a hundred clergy with an address linked to the Paraclete Center within the past few years. The majority of men either admitted or were accused of sexual abuse. Some even show up on recent church lists naming clergy it found to have credible allegations of abuse. But because they were never criminally convicted, there's no prison time and no requirement to register as a sex offender. They're not criminally charged. They're not required to register. How do you handle that? If you claim to be supervising them, then at an absolute bare minimum, be honest about who they are and why they're there. We called the paracletes and left messages, but none were returned. At the property, no trespassing signs are posted at every entrance. It's really more a question of protecting the community. Terry McKernan helps run Bishop Accountability, a website dedicated to compiling names of clergy accused or convicted in church sex scandals. They've identified more than 7,400 people. By our estimate, about 10% of the known accused priests have ever faced criminal charges, even though what they do is a crime. The church does not maintain a central list. Instead, separate ones are released by dioceses across the country. In St. Louis, the Archdiocese website includes a page for list release. 
There are names, but no details about the accusations. It's only if people pay attention to it that it's going to be changed and improved. One Missouri lawmaker is trying to make changes. And it's a recipe for disaster. Rep Robert Sauls proposed a bill to require a state license for centers treating sexually deviant behavior. When something goes wrong, people wonder why. The reason things went awry is because we have no regulation put in place. This is Sauls' second time proposing the bill. I think that you could probably ask nine out of ten people on the street and they'd think that we should probably have something in place for these types of facilities. But he says it's not getting a lot of traction with lawmakers. They have a moral ethical responsibility to make sure no child suffers what I suffered. John Bellocchio got involved after discovering his alleged abuser, former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, was in Dittmer. It's of great concern to me as a victim because it's essentially a residential spa-like facility with no gates. McCarrick was recently arrested at the center, charged with sexually assaulting a teenager nearly 50 years ago. That makes him the highest ranking Catholic leader to be criminally charged with child sex crimes. I wrote letters to everybody. I even wrote a letter to Pope. Michael Stenshorn says he feels stuck. What's going to happen? We're going to lose a house because, you know, we can't get anything for it? The center bought the homes on either side and made an offer on his, but Stenshorn says the price wasn't high enough. He didn't sell, now he's surrounded and living in a house he doesn't know who would want to buy. They should have bought me out and took care of me like to took care of my neighbors, but they didn't. What would you want to tell them? Very disappointed that they have to hide things like this. He says there's one thing that isn't a secret about the priests across the street. Their people are over there and they're going to protect them. Still no word from the servants of the paraclete on any of this. That proposed bill we just told you about would also require centers like the one in Dittmer to hire a doctor, psychologist, or someone else with that advanced training to treat people who are living there. Rep Salls tells me he plans to reintroduce the bill next session since this one is almost over. That's something we'll keep following and we'll let you know when there's an update. Susan O'Corey, News 4 Investigates. In Missouri, sex offenders are supposed to register with their local sheriff's office. We asked Jefferson County what was going on with Robert Boyette, the man whose address is in Missouri on the National Registry, but not on the state registry. The department tells us it's checking to see where he is. We'll let you know when they get back to us. A metro